Greetings everyone, through here, welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, we're going to take a look at Snowflake SQL REST API for building applications on Snowflake. Uh, there are many ways to interact with the Snowflake uh, environment, leveraging a client tool like the UI and SnowSide or uh, interacting with connectors by Visual Studio Code or PyCharm or Jupyter Notebook. But there is also another dimension for interacting with the data from within Snowflake and that is interacting programmatically leveraging REST API. So if you have IoT devices that are generating sensor data and you want to directly write that into Snowflake leveraging the REST framework, you can do that. So what this really unlocks is being able to build applications, RESTful applications powered with Snowflake as the backend. What we're going to see in the demo today is how to get that set up leveraging Postman. Very exciting demo. The very first thing we're going to do is go over to Snowflake API, the developers, the snowflake.com and this will be a very handy resource to have. There is documentations here. You're going to see the endpoints really documented, very powerful as a starting uh, point. For our situation, we're going to want to run this in Postman. What this is going to do for us is fork this project and make that available in Postman. I'm assuming you have a Postman account already. If not, I highly recommend you have one. Uh, if you're going to be developing with APIs, Postman is the gold standard for that. Let's go ahead and fork that. With a new project created, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new collection. Give this name demo hub with the collection created there are different types of authentication that are available typically you will see bearer token but what we care about for today's demo is OO2 now if you're going to do API key there's a whole different documentation on that first let's go in and add a new request give a new request name call that sample data this will be a post request now it's going to require a URI and let's switch back over onto the Snowflake site to see how to get that information. The very first thing that is needed is you're going to want to come in and create a security integration on Snowflake for a Postman. The way to do that would be create or replace security integration, give it a name, redirect a URI, specify that callback URI, as well as the validity of the token. Make this as big or as little as your use case demands. Create this that successfully created a security integration for us. Next, view the security integration that was created. The way you do that is to describe the Demo Hub security integration. So with this, if you give us a couple of values that we're going to need to use, what we really care about are the authorization endpoint to use for OO2, the client ID, as well as the OAuth token endpoint. Take a note of some of this. We're going to keep this on the screen and reference this as we go. Going back here, it's going to need the post URL. To get that, go back to the API developer guide that we saw a little bit earlier and copy all of this statement. That is what we need to paste in here. Your org as well as Snowflake Computing API specify version 2. If you don't do that, there's going to be an issue because version 1 doesn't work anymore and then statements. But of course, we need to specify the correct account. That account is this account here. So that's the account we need. Alternatively, you can get it by just copying this uh, URI uh, or URL and simply replacing everything outside of that. This should give you the same result. <clears throat> Next, go over to authorization, the type of authorization we want, inherit from parent, or in this case, we can either do keep a authentication or bear a token where you're going to generate a token outside and use that in here as well. But what we really care about is the OO2 authentication. With OO2 selected, we're going to come in and put in some details. The very first thing is to give in the token name, call this demo hub. CK for token. Next is a callback URL. Leave this blank. This is going to be exactly the same as what we had in here when we executed the statement. So if you go back to editor, this URL we would be the same. You can copy this or you can leave it blank. For me, I'm going to go ahead and leave it blank. The next thing I needed here is the authorization URL. So authorization URL would be what we saw earlier here, which is the authorization endpoint copy that 
and have that pasted in here. Next is the access token URL. This is the endpoint for authenticating to the server. If we go back over, Snowflake makes that all available. Here we see the access token endpoint. Copy that and make that available. Next is the clan ID and then it's going to ask for the clan secret. Again, all of that information is available here. So authentication clan ID, you're going to want to copy that, paste that in. Last but not least is the clan secret. Now in Snowflake, there is a function to give us the clan secret. If you go into the documentations, there is a system, a start procedure. You can call, provide an integration name, and it's going to give you the clan secret for that. Copy that and bring that over. If we use that particular function and the name of the integration we had was that, paste that in here, execute this. Be very careful with your secrets. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this after this demo. This is what we need. Now this is in JSON. I like to copy this into a space that's more readable. There's a couple of information in here, but what we need is not the OAuth client to secret. What we want is the OAuth client secret as part of the message. P uh, from here uh, to here, and that's all we need. Copy that and paste that in here. Uh, alternatively, if you saw what we've done is the client ID, which is the DW, uh, 2W equals to sign, uh, you could just essentially describe your integration and just get your client secret from there because the client ID is here as well. Now we have that all ready to go. Scope, leave that blank. State, leave that blank, and it should be all ready. Before we proceed, the next thing is you're going to want to go into headers. There's really not much to change there. A body here, we're going to have to specify the message we want to send over. Select raw here and put in the message. Go back over. Here is the message we're going to have to send in. There is a, a sample here you can copy and use as such. So statement, timeout, specify the database, specify the warehouse row and some other information. Again, based on the, the specifics of what you're trying to do. What I did was I already did a lot of this copied and filled. Go back over here and paste this again statement, which is what we see here, timeout. I'm going to leave that blank and some other information that you might want to specify. Now, once you have that all done, our database is going to be specified to schema is specified, warehouse is specified. Again, do it exactly the way it shows up here. Let's go back on this. Once you have all of that done, we can go ahead and submit a request to Snowflake. Hit send. It did not like that because it says authorization required. Of course, we haven't been authorized. So our access token is currently blank. To fix that, let's go back here and we're going to do get access tokens. Go back to authorization. We have all the information in there, but we need to generate and get the access token. Do get access token. Now, this is going to give us a prompt. Once you authenticate, it's going to bring you to this page that provides a message. This is a very important thing to be aware of. It's going to ask, do you want to allow that user or that principal to access this account using this role, sysadmin? And this user, whatever user you're using, needs to have the sysadmin role. But more importantly, they also have to have sysadmin as the default role. So sysadmin cannot just be uh, some other role. The default role has to be sysadmin. And if you have any doubts about that, go back to Snowflake, select users, pick whatever user you're trying to authenticate with. In this case, I'm just going to use Fruitech as an example here. Go ahead and edit that user and make sure that the default role for that user is sysadmin if you're going to be using this particular user for that demo or you can use the command line to alter the user and set the default role to sysadmin. If it's not sysadmin, you're going to run into issues for sure. Now, assuming you have that set up to sysadmin, go ahead, allow that. Authentication is complete. Token will be generated. And we can proceed. Now the token has been generated and this is uh, the good information we want. Go ahead and use token. Uh, by clicking use token, it's added that token to uh, directly for us and you can always uh, refresh the token. With that done, we can go back into our body 
verify we have a SQL statement. In this case, we're doing a select statement, we're going into select star from the sample data and get the top 10 records. Again, because we're using a principle that is coming in with sysadmin, you're going to want to make sure that the sysadmin has access to this table. I do know for sure that if I come into here and I switch from account admin uh, to sysadmin for this user and I go into query editor, I know that they should have access to this uh, particular uh, schema uh, because that's what is going to be coming in from the REST API. With that done, let's go ahead and submit the request. But before we do, there's one last thing we're going to have to check here. We have raw. We're going to want to make sure the text going to the server is a JSON. Again, statement, select, star from the TPCDH and the other configurations are pretty standard. So let's uh, submit this. Takes a few seconds and our results have been returned. So the data coming from that table, if you want to see the raw data, we can go ahead and see the raw records coming back from that table. A very straightforward way of leveraging OO2 to authenticate into Snowflake using the SQL REST API. If we go back over here and do a check on activities, go back to query history, we should see the query coming from the SQL API postman and this query is uh, giving us the results that we saw a little bit earlier. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Just to recap, what you're going to do is you're going to come in, create a new collection, make sure you have your post statement leveraging SQL API v2. You're going to want to come into authorization, select OAuth 2.0, go in, give it a name, fill in the details, and those details will come from your security integration. Generate the access token. The access token gets filled in. Now that access token will be used in your body. You can put in the specific query you want. Make sure that the format is exactly what you want. In this case, JSON. And once you have that, you can submit that. And that goes over to Snowflake. You can use this programmatically in your code in Python or Java, or whatever code it is, or whatever app it is you're building, interacting with Snowflake, leveraging the SQL REST API to build applications. There you go. Hopefully, this was a relevant demo to you. As always, this is a space where people who are looking to get started might struggle and stumble, but I'm hoping that this quick demo would be relevant to you. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end. This has been through. I will see you in our next demo. Thank <laughs> you.